What's up everybody, Yellow Mustang back again with another Roblox scripting video. Today we are going to be finally creating the helicopter AI. But before we get into that, I would like to thank you guys for the huge response uh, my last video got. We crushed the light goal of 300 likes by a pretty large margin, so thank you guys for that. Uh, today's goal, let's get one like on this video. <laughs> Should be... It's a pretty good goal, but anyways, let's get to it. To handle the physics of the helicopter, I've opted to use two body movers, body position and body gyro. All right, and as you can see, we are off to a very strong start. Continuing on here, I gave you the gift of flight, and the helicopter's goal is to stay roughly 50 studs off the ground. So if we move the platform here, you can see smaller changes the helicopter does not care about, but if the pad gets pretty close to the helicopter, then it will raise to about 50 studs off the ground again, because that is our ideal flying height. As the helicopter flies through the different terrain here, you can see there will be small elevation changes, which the helicopter does not need to care about as it's flying around. The helicopter only needs to care about the larger changes in terrain, which this should cover. Next here, I have created a simple physics system for the helicopter. You can see the helicopter is not perfectly still anymore. The way this physics system works is the further the helicopter is tilted in a given direction, the higher the speed the helicopter is going to go in that direction. So to show this off to you guys, I will make the helicopter fly forward here and oh anyways and of course the helicopter can also fly side to side as well here so i'll go ahead and rotate the helicopter on the z-axis and you can see he will drift over to the right as he is tilting okay so the next order of business for our helicopter here is getting it to fly towards a given point Wherever that may be, I currently having it fly towards this humongous red cube here. But basically it just tilts the helicopter in a given direction based off of a vector 3 value we give it. And then the physics system just handles the rest with the rest of the movement. So all the helicopter is doing is just tilting itself and then the physics system is doing its job. Now if we move this cube behind some terrain though, you're going to see the helicopter is going to have a bad time and just crash directly into it and then we're gonna have to have another funeral for the pilot because this helicopter currently has no crash avoidance so let's add that now several months later let me level with you guys for a minute here you may think of me as yellow mustang the man who just scripts everything first try and it just works the way he intended it to work that is not the case especially with the crash avoidance function uh, in the morning, I would wake up to work on the helicopter, you know, first thing, 5 a.m., wake up, work on the helicopter. And I just, the whole time I'm working on it, I would be thinking about how broken and how much I hate the crash avoidance function because I could not get this function to work the way I wanted. After iteration and iteration, and even after I rewrote the function a few times as well, the helicopter would find a way to crash. I would work on the next part of the helicopter thinking the crash avoidance was working good and we can move on but then lo and behold the helicopter crashes in some new way that i had not foreseen anyways i've got the helicopter now dodging obstacles fairly well i've accomplished this by ray casting in a circle around the helicopter and then the direction of the ray casts 
will change depending on the flight direction of the helicopter. So you can see as we detect that the building is in our way and the helicopter kind of backs away from it, the direction of the beams, which is the direction of the ray cast, will adjust accordingly. So we're always checking in the correct direction that we are heading. When we detect an obstacle is in our way, the helicopter will first check to see if it can fly above it. If the top of the obstacle is within 10 studs, then the helicopter will simply fly above the obstacle instead of trying to fly out of the way. If we can't fly above it, then the helicopter will raycast in a bunch of essentially random angles until it finds an angle that is free of obstacles. So as you can see, the helicopter hitting the building here can't fly above it, so we are kind of just circling it at the moment here. Now that we got everything combined here, you can see the helicopter can now navigate around the building here to get to the point. But I think we can clean this up a little bit by getting some pathfinding involved with this helicopter too, so the helicopter doesn't have to, you know, fly up to the building and then back away. Let's set up something so the helicopter can just navigate around the building like an actual pilot would. Now, since the helicopter is flying, I'm not going to be able to use Roblox's default pathfinding service. I'm going to have to use something else. I have opted to use ASTAR path algorithm, which has been proven time and time again to be very efficient, lightweight, and is going to be the best solution for us. So you can see here what I have on the screen is just a sample of it working in a 2D space here. And we're basically going to create a grid like this for ASTAR to work with, uh, albeit in 3D. The first thing we need to do to get ASTAR working with our helicopter here is generate a grid of nodes for it to work off of. And currently it is generating nodes on the Z axis until it reaches the edges of the map. And I determine that by just ray casting straight down. And if the ray doesn't hit anything within a thousand studs straight down, then I consider that to be the end of the map. We then generate nodes on the X axis and just continue that same method essentially until it hits the edge of the map for the entire row. Then after we generate our grid of nodes, we need to give each node a score. The score is calculated from a G, H, and F value. G is the distance from the starting point, which is going to be nearest to the helicopter. H is going to be the distance from the goal, which is going to be whatever target we're trying to fly to. And then F is the final score, which is just G plus H. Now that we got the grid situated for our helicopter, we can now implement A star to start using our grid here. Currently, I have the helicopter trying to get to this red brick here, and my script will just identify the start node and the end node so we can work off of that. So here's the first function that A star is going to perform, is it's going to open all of the nodes around the starting node and calculate the scores. And then it's just going to choose the node with the lowest score to go to. So you can see in this case, the node with the lowest score is in the top right with an F score of 435. So A star will jump to this node. We now jumped to the 435 node and closed it and then opened the neighbors around it. You can see now the lowest scoring node is going to be F412 and then A star is going to jump to that one. You get the point from here. A star is just going to keep selecting the node with the lowest score until it gets to the end node. This is a very simple example because there's no obstacles. Let's throw the end point behind the building now and see what happens. Okay, so you can see A star doing its thing here and it decides to go directly through the building. So we need to figure out a way to tell A star which nodes it can go to and which nodes it can't. So the solution I found for this is just using ray casting to make kind of a star pattern around each node as they are open and then it just checks to make sure that there's no parts or anything next to the node. Um, and if there are, it will close that node and it will turn black here and then A star will not use that node and it will just simply go around it. Now the next step for this is just trimming the path down to only the important nodes. The helicopter does not need to fly to each individual node, so we will just pick out the nodes where the turns are at, essentially, and then just cut out the ones that are in a straight line. Now combining all of that, we'll have the helicopter actually start using the path here, 
and you can see the helicopter can now fly around that building no issue in a much more realistic manner. Now that we've got the helicopter flying around the map fairly well, we're going to work on the weapon system now. First order of business here is the helicopter currently is a single mesh which means I can't have any of the weapons turn and aim like I would like them to. So I'm going to port this helicopter over into Blender and then fix some of the mesh issues and then break everything apart so I can adjust the aiming as the helicopter attacks stuff. Oh wait, but do I hear time-lapse music? <laughs> Welcome everybody to Mustang's Proving Grounds. We are here in the desert today in the blistering sun. We got a military base set up with a small village for our helicopter to shoot at. So let's start working on these weapons. So as you saw in the time lapse there, I broke the mesh apart and here is everything laid out nice and neatly. We got a brand new custom designed Hydra missile there and then everything else is basically from the helicopter itself. I just separated it. Uh, I corrected a mesh issue with the M230, but other than that, it was fairly simple breaking everything apart. So without further ado, let's get to work on the M230 uh, machine gun. So we got the M230 working very well now. You can see it absolutely shreds the figures it's shooting at here. I got some muzzle flash and the nice bullet trails and all of that. And it also will lead the shot, so if the target is moving, it will shoot in front of it. So the next thing I got cooked up for the helicopter is the the Hydra missiles. You can see here that I got a nice trail effect and these are for targeting, you know, smaller humanoids and perhaps unarmored vehicles as well. I got a nice trail on them and they also will lead the shot similarly to the M230. Last but definitely not least for the helicopter, we have the Hellfire missiles. These are used for targeting larger vehicles or tanks, anything with armor pretty much. These are highly explosive, do a ton of damage, and similarly to the Hydra missiles, they have a nice trail, and an additional effect these have is they actually disappear from the helicopter holster there. You got the Hellfire missile rack, and as it fires them, they will disappear as they are used. Now, combining all these weapon systems together was a fairly simple task. Basically, the bigger the target is, the bigger the weapon the helicopter is going to use. So if it's like a huge enemy, like a tank, it'll use the Hellfire, then resort to the Hydra. And last, if it's out of missiles for both of those, or it cannot fire those because of the angle it's at, it will resort to the M230. But similarly, it'll go in the opposite direction for figures it will prioritize using the Hydra missile or the M230 and then if it's out of ammo for those then it will resort to using the Hellfire. Next now that we got the helicopter flying around killing targets we need to have it take action when there's nothing around to attack so instead of just floating in a random direction or just hovering in place I decided I would just have it return to the helipad so you can see here after it's done killing all these figures here it will return to the helipad and then land and then if any other 
figures or anything or any other targets enter the battlefield then it will turn its propellers back on and then go back to battle and then just return similarly and when it does return to the helipad the ammunition for all of its weapon systems will be restocked all right boys link to the model is in the description thank you guys for watching and i will see you next time